for Danchima Media Election Special. And welcome to a special edition of Danchima Media. Today is Election Day 2024, a pivotal moment in America's history. Oh, it's, uh, it's a real nail biter. Vice President Harris versus former President Trump. Mm -hmm. The nation is uh, well on the edge of its seat, as they say. Absolutely. And we're using a live news feed to bring you the latest developments along well, with live, yeah, live updates, some expert analysis to help us break it all down. Well, you know, the energy is just palpable. Yeah. Even just through the broadcast, it's so clear that this election is just unlike any other. Yeah, no kidding. But before we really get into the, you know, details and all that, sure. let's talk about why this election is so important in the first place. Okay. What makes this election yeah. so significant? Mm. Why should even people outside the U.S. be paying attention to this? Well, for starters, yeah. I think you could really think of this as a global crossroads. Mm. So many things hinge on who wins this election like the U.S.'s relationship with China, mm -hmm. the future of Taiwan, even the war in Ukraine and, you know, all of those ongoing conflicts in the Middle East. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, it's like the whole world is holding its breath right along with us. Yeah. Okay, so zooming back in on the U.S. Okay. Um, the news feed is really buzzing about this being an incredibly close race. Yeah. They're showing the first vote from Dixville Notch, New Hampshire. Right. It's three votes for Harris. Yeah. Three for Trump. Wow. Talk about setting the stage for a very tense night. It really is a powerful visual. Yeah. Especially when you consider the idea of swing states. Okay. Like those places like Pennsylvania and Georgia where the vote could go either way. Right. And every undecided voter in those states is holding so much power right now. So it's not just about the you know overall number of votes, but also yeah. where those votes are coming from. Exactly. And on top of that, yeah, we are seeing a record-breaking number of people voting this year. Oh, wow. Over 82 million Americans have already voted early. That's amazing. Sounds like people are fired up about this one. Absolutely. Speaking of being fired up, yeah. the broadcast is now focusing on those stark differences between... Harris and Trump's closing arguments. Mm. Harris is really focusing on issues like abortion rights. Yes. And the cost of living, you know, trying to ease the burden on everyday Americans. It's a clear strategy to appeal to those who are really feeling the pinch. Yeah. Especially working families who are dealing with inflation and housing costs. For sure. And meanwhile, Trump is hitting those familiar notes that we've heard before. Right. Border security. Yeah. Tax cuts. Yeah. It's a message designed to resonate with his base. Sure. You know, those who believe in a strong and economically dominant America. And it seems to be working. Yeah. There's a real sense of anxiety among Trump's supporters. Mm. You know, they really believe that a Harris win would completely change American values yeah. and their way of life. We are hearing a lot about this idea of a divided America. Yep. Our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Sid Hunt Sill, mm -hmm. is sharing some really eye-opening interviews. Yeah. It seems like both sides really see the other as a threat yeah. to the country's future. A genuine threat. It's really worrying, yeah. this level of polarization. It's worrying. And it's even reflected in the issues that voters are most concerned about. Yeah. What are those? Well, mm -hmm. immigration, obviously the economy. Yes. And the impact of the ongoing Gaza war. Right. Okay. So let's break those down one by one. Okay. Immigration has always been a hot button issue in the U.S. It has. But how is it playing out in this particular election? Well, for a lot of Trump supporters, okay. it's about more than just, you know, the number of immigrants. Okay. It represents a loss of control, mm. a threat to their vision of American identity and their security. Right. They see stricter border control and a crackdown on illegal immigration as essential. Mm-hmm. Not just for protecting American jobs, right? But for preserving what they see as American values, right? So for them, it's about a sense of security, yes. economic and cultural. Exactly. And what about the economic front? What are we seeing there? Well, there's a lot of frustration with the rising cost of living. Yeah. People are feeling squeezed at the grocery store, at the gas pump, mm. and it's fueling this anger and a desire for change. For sure. Many of them see Trump's promises of tax cuts and economic growth as a way back to prosperity. Like a path back. Yes. And then we have Gaza War. Right. Which adds another layer of you know complexity to this whole situation. Absolutely. It raises those big questions about America's role in the world. Yeah. And how each candidate would handle these complex foreign policy challenges. For voters with ties to 
that conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a news story for them. Right. It's personal. Very personal. And it shapes their views on a lot of things. Yeah. Foreign aid, mm -hmm. military intervention. It, it's a reminder that what happens on the other side of the world can really impact our lives here at home. Now let's talk about those celebrity endorsements for a minute. Sure. Both sides have been really pulling out all the stops. Yeah. Trying to win over those undecided voters. Right. We've seen some big name endorsements. Mm -hmm. Even Kamala Harris is talking about her Indian heritage. Yeah. Clearly trying to connect with that community. It's, you know, it's standard stuff for an election. Yeah. But our political analyst, Chris Blackburn, mm -hmm. he's actually pretty skeptical about how effective that is. Right. In such a polarized environment. Okay. He argues that people have already made up their minds. Right. And even their favorite celebrities aren't going to change that. So the celebrity endorsements are more about, you know, rallying the base. That's a good way to put than it. Than converting new voters. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and speaking of rallying the base, okay. the news is highlighting an interesting trend. What's that? More Republicans are voting early this year. Oh, wow. That's different from past elections, where Democrats have typically dominated early voting. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Any theories on what's behind that? Well, could be a few things. Okay. Maybe there's more enthusiasm in the Republican base. Okay. You know, they're energized, they're motivated, and they're getting out there to vote early. So more engagement from Republican voters. That's one possibility. Uh, okay. It could also be a strategic move by the Republican Party. Mm. You know, a real effort to get their voters to the polls early. Okay. They've been encouraging it making it easier and more accessible, and it seems to be working. So maybe it's a combination of both. Yeah, could be both grassroots enthusiasm mm -hmm. and some good campaign strategizing. So we've got an incredibly close race, deeply divided voters, <sighs> and a global audience on the edge of their seats. It's a lot. What does this all mean for the U.S.? That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. I think we're seeing more than just an election here. Yeah. We're seeing this clash of ideologies, mm -hmm. a real battle for what America is and what it should be. It's like two completely different paths for the country. It is. And the stakes couldn't be higher. That's right. And that tension. Yeah. It's woven into all of those key issues that we've been talking about. Right. Immigration, the economy. The Gaza War. Okay, so let's dive deeper into those. Sure. And explore what they reveal about where America stands in 2024. Sounds good. What's really interesting here is that this isn't just about two candidates. Right. You know, it's not just about who gets to be president. Okay. We're seeing two very different visions for America. Yeah. Two different ideas about what America is and what it should be. It's like two different paths for the country. Exactly. And the stakes are incredibly high. Yeah, no kidding. And this this tension, mm -hmm. it plays into all those key issues we've been discussing. Right. Like immigration. Okay. For a lot of Trump supporters, it goes beyond just the numbers. Mm. It's about a threat to their identity. Yeah. To their security. Mm. They see stricter border control as a way to protect American jobs and preserve their culture. Like a culture they feel is slipping away. Exactly. So it's about more than policy. It's about belonging. Right. It's about holding on to a way of life. Yes. And those anxieties, they extend to the economy too. Absolutely. They're struggling with rising prices, you know? For sure. Feeling that squeeze every time they go to the grocery store or fill up their gas tank. Yeah. And they see Trump's promises, mm -hmm. you know, the tax cuts, mm -hmm. the economic growth as a lifeline. Like a way to regain control. Exactly. A way to get back to where they feel they should be financially. And for Harris's supporters. Well, they're drawn to different priorities. Okay. They see things like abortion rights and LGBTQ plus equality as core American values. Mm -hmm. Absolutely essential for a fair and inclusive society. So for them, it's about progress. Yeah. About making sure everyone has the same rights and opportunities. No matter who they are. Regardless of who they are or who they love. And they're probably more concerned about climate change, too. Definitely, they believe the government needs to step up and protect the environment. Okay. So they might be more open to policies like renewable energy or regulating emissions. Even if it means some economic changes. Right. Even if it costs a bit more. So two very different sets of values shaping how people vote. It is. And we have to remember, yeah. these aren't just, you know, political ideas. They have 
real consequences for people's lives. Absolutely, like healthcare. Right, healthcare is huge. Having access to affordable healthcare can make or break a family. Yeah, and the policies each candidate supports, yeah. expanding coverage versus market solutions, you know, yeah. that'll directly impact millions of Americans. And then there's education. Oh, yeah, college costs are through the roof. There are so many young people are buried in debt. And Harris wants to make college tuition free. Right, for certain family. While Trump's focused on those vocational training programs. Two very different approaches. Huge implications for the workforce. And child care, too. Yeah, child care is so expensive. It's a major expense, especially for working families. Harris wants universal pre-K and subsidized child care. Mm -hmm. Trump's all about those tax breaks. Two different paths again. With big consequences. Real impact on families. Yeah, it's a reminder that elections are about more than just picking a president. Right, it's about shaping policies. That affect our lives. Our families, our communities. And it's not just about America either. No, the impact goes way beyond that. We've talked about the global implications. Right. But let's really dig into how this election could change things on the world stage. Okay. So let's start with the war in Ukraine. Okay. How might a Harris presidency versus a Trump presidency change things there? Well, that's the million dollar question. Right. Trump has been hinting at a more isolationist approach. All right. You know, maybe scaling back U.S. involvement in the conflict. So less support for Ukraine? Potentially. He's even said he might recognize Russia's claim on Crimea. Wow. That would be a huge deal. Yeah, that would worry a lot of people. Ukraine and its allies, for sure. So a Trump win could actually help Putin. It's possible it could make the war last even longer. And Harris? Well, she'd likely continue the current support for Ukraine. Okay. Military aid, financial aid, mm -hmm. and maintaining that strong stance uh, against Russia. So under Harris, the U.S. would be more active in trying to end the conflict. I think that's a likely scenario. Okay. And then there's China. Right. A whole other set of challenges. Yeah. The U.S.-China relationship is complicated. Complex. Lots of tension. And this election will definitely shape how those two superpowers interact. <laughs> no doubt. So how would Harris and Trump approach China differently? Well, Trump's been very confrontational. You know, yeah. terrorist trade wars. Right. He's also been critical of China's human rights record. In their handling of the pandemic. Exactly. Mm. Harris acknowledges those challenges, mm. but she seems to favor a more diplomatic approach. Okay. She talks about cooperating on things like climate change. And global security. Right. So Trump might mean more tension with China. And maybe even escalation. While Harris might bring a more cooperative relationship. Yes but still cautious. And it's not just Ukraine and China watching this election. The whole world is paying attention. Yeah. They know that what happens in America affects everyone. It's a lot to think about. It is. Can feel a bit overwhelming. But it reminds us how powerful democracy is. Yeah. How important it is to be informed and engaged. Absolutely. Before we move on, I want to touch on that trend we mentioned. Okay. More Republicans voting early. Yeah, the analysts are talking about that. What are they saying? Well, one theory is that it shows real excitement in the Republican base. Okay. They're energized, motivated. Ready to vote. And getting those votes in early. So a more engaged Republican electorate. That's one possibility. Okay, what else? Another theory is that it's a strategic move by the party. Mm. A deliberate effort to get as many votes as possible. They've been pushing early voting, making it easy and convenient. And it's working. Seems to be. So maybe it's both. Could be both grassroots enthusiasm and good strategy. Okay. And, you know, this could change how the results look on election night. How so? If a lot of Republicans have already voted, mm -hmm. it might take longer to see who's winning. Makes sense. Adds another layer of complexity. To an already unpredictable election. Exactly. And it shows how important it is to understand voting patterns. Yeah. How they change over time. We can't just rely on what happened in the past. Right. We need to look at what's happening right now. So as we enter the final hours of this election, mm -hmm. it's clear that this is more than just a contest between two candidates. Much more. It's a battle for the future of America. A clash of ideologies. With big consequences for everyone. Absolutely. And as the results come in, yeah. we have to remember that this is about more than just who wins or loses. Yep. This mm -hmm. election will have a lasting impact on America and its place in the world. It's about what this election tells us about America. Right about the divisions in our society and the challenges we face as a nation. So to really understand those challenges, yeah. we need to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. Okay. What does this election tell us 
about the future of American democracy. Mm -hmm. How will America deal with these deep divisions? That's the big question. These different ideas about what America should be. Uh. Yeah, it really does feel like we're at this crossroads, you know, mm -hmm. like two paths in front of us. Right. And no matter who wins tonight, yeah. these divisions aren't just going to vanish. Because the thing, this election has really exposed those fault lines yeah. in American society. This is polarization that's been building for years. Right. And the question is, mm -hmm. how does America move forward from this? Yeah. How do we how do we even begin to bridge these divides? It's a tough question. It is. And I know it's on a lot of people's minds. I'm sure it is. You know, we've seen how much distrust there is between mm. the two sides. Suspicion, even fear. It feels like more than just politics, you know? Right. It's a cultural divide. Yeah. Social. Even. A real chasm. And it makes you worry about the future of American democracy. It does. Can a system built on compromise mm -hmm. really survive when there's so little common ground? It's a valid concern. I'm not even sure that left versus right makes sense anymore. Yeah. It feels like it's about more than just disagreeing on policies. Right. It's about different worldviews. Different values, <laughs> different ways of seeing the world. We need new ways to talk about politics. Absolutely. Ways to move beyond us versus them. Right. Create space for real dialogue. Because without that, I don't know how we bridge these gaps. It's tough. It's like we're trapped in these echo chambers. Yeah. Just hearing the same things over and over. And it reinforces what we already believe. Exactly. So how right. do we break out of that? How do we talk to people who see things differently? It's a challenge, but we have to start somewhere. Where? It starts listening, you know? Yeah. Really trying to understand the other side. Even if we disagree. Even if we disagree, it takes empathy. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that even people with different views, yeah. they want the same basic thing. Security opportunity. A better future. We're all in this together. We are. It's easy to get caught up in the anger and division. It is. But at the end of the day, we're all Americans. Sharing this country and its future. We have to find a way to work together. We do. This election has been a wake-up call. In a lot of ways. It shows how fragile democracy can be. Right. How important it is for all of us to participate. So as the results come in tonight mm -hmm. and in the days and weeks that follow, yeah. what advice would you give to our listeners? Don't give up hope. Yeah. Don't let the cynicism and apathy win. No. Stay engaged. Stay informed. Right. Talk to people who see things differently. Mm -hmm. Try to understand them. It's about having real conversations. Civil discourse, remembering our shared humanity. Even when we disagree. Exactly. And remember, the future of America isn't set in stone. Okay. It's shaped by the choices we make. Individually and together. That's right. This has been an incredible deep dive. It has. Really insightful, thought-provoking. I'm glad. And a real call to action. I hope so. Thank you for helping us understand this complex situation. You're welcome. And for reminding us that we all have the power to make things better. Absolutely. And to our listeners, yeah. stay curious, stay engaged, mm -hmm. and never underestimate the power of your voice. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into the issues that matter. Looking forward to it. Until then, stay informed and stay hopeful.